here at the Mobile World Congress. So what are you showing over here? So what we're showing here is YHE technology. It's 60 gigahertz technology that basically Silicon Image, who's one of the founders of YHE, has modified a Galaxy S3, as well as modified an Amazon Kindle to transmit wirelessly the full HD signal to these TVs. You'll see on top of the TVs, there's a YHD receiver. So basically, um, you're getting rid of cables now. You basically now have a wireless link that's full HD quality, no uh, transmit latency at all. There's less than a frame uh, of any kind of uh, lag. So essentially, if you're doing high-res uh, gaming, you can basically do it without any delay. Nice. So uh, what is, what is, how does that work, the receiver? So, so it's basically 60 gigahertz. It's our standard uh, put together by the consortium, which consists of Sony, Toshiba, Panasonic, Samsung, LG, TP Vision, and Silicon Image. And these seven companies got together to create this standard more than four years ago. And so what you're seeing is essentially uh, the receiver is connected via HDMI to the TV. The beautiful thing is I can put my TV anywhere now. Put it up on the wall. I don't have to worry about cables. Um, we're in uh, almost, I think, eight different Epson projectors. So I put the projector up on the ceiling and I don't have to route cables down, you know, across the roof, down the wall to wherever I happen to have the source. Um, even a PS3, I don't have to worry about where it is in the room. I can put it, if I have a gaming chair or you know a special sound system connected to it, it doesn't matter where it is. That's what's really nice about doing wireless video, is it doesn't matter what the location is, but the quality has to be perfect. And that's the key thing here, is that uh, Silicon Image is able to make chips that basically have our wireless HD technology inside, and it has perfect quality video and no gaming lag. So it's, it's, it's a great standard. So how long has this been on the market? Um, these pro products have been on the market for more than four years, since 2009 was when the first products came out. Is it still version 1.0 of this spec? Um, we're, actually, or? we're actually at version 1.1, which the spec actually goes up to Ultra HD. So it actually can support 4K TVs. Um, 1.1 supports 4K? Yeah. The, the current spec con, con, uh, will support 4K. So what is the spectrum used? So it is, it is the 60 gigahertz um, public spectrum. Okay. So uh, it's basically unlicensed spectrum in the 60 gigahertz bandwidth, 60 gigahertz band. So, and, what you're, and what you're seeing, what you just took a picture of is Silicon Image's fourth generation uh, product that they've taken the chip and shrunk it down to that very tiny chip right there. Fourth and generation? That's their fourth generation product, and, what, what it, and that's what's inside this Amazon Kindle and the Galaxy S3, that they've modified it to put it in to demonstrate the technology. What's the other part here? That's the actual module it fits on top of. So a chip doesn't work by itself. You typically have to have a few things around it. So um, there's some press releases on the market about the YGIG. What is that? So YGIG is 8211AD, IEEE standard, and Wi-Fi um, has the standard coming out. So you're, uh, they've announced a number of, of different uh, chip suppliers, uh, Intel, Broadcom, uh, Qualcomm, and Theros, and I think sometime this year you'll start to see products uh, coming out in the same band that we're in. Um, the difference is, is that we've been around since 2009 with products. So we have, you know, silicon images in their fourth generation of products, a lot of maturity, robustness, stability, whereas YGIG is just starting to come out with their first generation of product. So you need to be in that spectrum for that kind of thing to work? Well, uh, the thing about 60 gigahertz is it's very wide bandwidth. So we are sending a signal that is multi gigabits per second. Um, so that's what gives us the great clarity, um, no latency. It's about four gigabits per second. Four gigabits per second? Yeah. What is uh, HDMI bandwidth? Uh, HDMI, it depends on whether you're 1080p 60 or you know 4K. So it's about it's comparable to HDMI. So comparable so, to an so HDMI bandwidth for 1080p 60. So and then there's people talking about Miracast and uh, yeah. So so I see a lot of that, especially with phones. Uh, HTC has their HD Media Link HD, and uh, Samsung has their all-cast dongle. Um, the 
issue with Miracast is it's over Wi-Fi, and Wi-Fi is ubiquitous, and that in a way hurts them because you're going to have interference. You know, how many APs do you see from your house? So. Uh, in the end, they have to get over their interference problem, but more importantly, because Wi-Fi is a much uh, smaller band pipe, you have to basically take the video, compress it, send it over the pipe, uncompress it, and you're going to add latency, which for anyone who's tried to play a game, it's very frustrating to have a delay in the game where you're responding to something on the screen that's already happened on the phone, but you don't realize that, but you're controlling the actual phone. That's the beautiful thing about showing these games on uh, with wireless HD because there is no latency. What I'm doing on the phone is exactly what I'm seeing on the TV. So right now or in the near future you can imagine having one device like a Galaxy S3 that would have uh, wireless HD, that would have Miracast, and that would have MHL, and people can just like... Uh, yeah, I, I think it's usage based. If I'm just sharing photos with my family, then I think Miracast is fine. If I want to do anything more than that that's interactive, like playing a game, uh, then I, I obviously want the no lag, you know, perfect quality video. You, you think of how much money the game publishers spend on making their game look great with awesome graphics. They don't want to see it compressed further and degraded. So, so I think that you know, each one has its uses. So how much uh, power does uh, uh, wireless HD use compared to uh, Miracast? Actually, we're, we're uh, at much lower power now. So the uh, demos you see here are running at about a half a watt, 500 milliamps. Whereas uh, I know when I play around my Miracast phone and I uh, get an Android widget, like battery monitor widget, and I watch it, it's running close to an amp. So it's probably about 50% of what I'm seeing over Miracast. But you get the perfect quality and the no gaming lag. So how much is the price of something like this? Is it possible that all devices can have this? Uh, that's my hope, but uh, unfortunately for pricing and implementation, that's a silicon image question, and I'm more standards focused. All right, so uh, 4K support is today. Uh, the specification supports 4K. Um, again, I, I, don't, I don't believe that silicon image chips today support 4K, but the 1.1 standard uh, does support 4K. And uh, this is 60 frames per second, or? Uh, this is 1080p 60, yes. We support that today. 3D too. With 3D, yep, absolutely.